This Tyler the Great Warrior story keeps getting crazier. What's up guys, we're back with another video where I'm talking about current events in Yu-Gi-Oh, which this week has been one of the craziest in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, I think. We already had one of the biggest releases in the last couple of years, the 25th anniversary edition, which was obviously huge. And now we have Tyler the Great Warrior going up for sale. And not only that, the 25th anniversary Megatents have released every quarter century edition secret rare that we could pull. So in this video, we're gonna go over some of these events because wow, this the news just keeps coming, guys. So first of all, let's check out Tyler the Great Warrior. Oh my goodness, if you guys were not following this at 8 p.m. my time, central time, or 6 p.m., Pacific or 9 p.m. Eastern last night. This card went absolutely berserk in the first hour. I think everyone watching this wanted to at least bid a few dollars on this thing or even more than they possibly could bid on this thing just so they could say they bid on it. At the moment, there's 144 bids. They were up to 100K in like 45 minutes. Now, if you guys remember my top 10 most expensive cards video or our recent Tyler the Grave Warrior video, you know that only a couple of cards have ever even come close to this price. So this is borderline the most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card already. Let's clarify TCG card because OCG sometimes has some weird sales that I don't really know about and can't follow that well. But for TCG, we are only 24,000 away from reaching that Blue Eyes White Dragon BGS 10 price. And an interesting thing that you can do while on eBay, a tip for you guys is uh, you can go look at the bids and see some of the buyers. So you can go through from the very beginning. So when I was watching at the beginning, I noticed that a guy with zero feedback went up to 45,000. So I was like, oh, is this thing being shill bid? It's a little scary. If someone with zero feedback is shill bidding, eBay is going to cut them off. They're gonna like cancel their account or whatever and potentially if it's too malicious you know they do a bunch of this it's too uh, you know very expensive it might be worth ebay to come after them so it could be dangerous to shill bid at first i was a little worried that that was happening because you saw this guy like he's he's bidding up himself which is a little weird but then a guy with eighty nine thousand feedback so we're talking big I mean, uh, I don't know, uh, does our friend Sassiato have this number? Not totally sure, I didn't ask him if he bid, but we might do a little investigating and find out. A few moments later. For some reason, I can't get the feedback to show on the browser, but I do have the phone, and it looks like our friend Sassiato, if you guys can see that, I don't know if it'll, it'll focus in. He has 89473, so it looks like he made a sale since that bid, but it looks like our friend Sassiato got in on the action. We'll see if he ever did it again. I recognize that because no one else in Yu-Gi-Oh has that much feedback. Sassy, we know it's you. So Sassy put in a big 50K bid. There was a bunch of, I mean, 1100, that's not, that's probably a legit buyer if you got that much, 272. Looks like they're bidding themselves up here, which may just mean that they put in a max bid and then that means they're just outbidding the other people who are bidding, I guess. I don't really follow eBay auctions that often but i would assume that's what happened here they put in maybe a 54k max bid then they got beat by 54 5, 6, 9. so we're looking like mostly legit then this is how you know this guy was memeing so this guy already has zero feedback 69 420 on the bid so yeah this guy's probably not a legit bidder hopefully he doesn't you know keep bidding but it looks like he does up here maybe he is just a very high-end guy that doesn't use ebay a lot i don't know we're just speculating i don't know who this guy is you can't really look up the names you can see here that he's only bid on one item though and has 31 total bids so that's a little weird so fortunately i think eventually this guy so he bids all the way up to 80,000, and then i think he's out out after that so then it ends up being a lot more like 100 ish uh feedback bidders so those people seem legit this person has seven which is not great they have also only bid on one item so that's that's a little weird it's getting bid up this person has seven thousand so they're certainly legit it seems like there's a ton of people who are legit interested but then these people are a little questionable but you never know maybe they just don't use ebay a lot then we got more legit bids going up here thousand so this was all in the first hour as you guys could see six o'clock pdt was when it released so this is 33 minutes in it was going crazy everyone was freaking out on twitter i think it was trending at one point which is pretty insane for a yugi card uh just selling like not even doing anything just selling there are a bunch of legit ones like here we've got a hundred thousand and we get all the way up the person winning right now is 2723 we've got 135,100 on the top of the great warrior which i mean that is insane in terms of the number we still have nine more days for this to go up my prediction of 325 i mean it's looking decent right now i think it could definitely get there we'll have to see like now once all the memes get out of the way and people being like i've been on the car and posting it and stuff like that now that that's gone like how much farther will it go i'll make a second prediction i think that there will be little movement until the, probably the last day 
maybe even the last few hours. I think it'll probably stay around this number, maybe go up a couple of times between now and then, and then the last day it just kind of shoots up. So it's probably going to go way up and then kind of plateau and then last day go crazy. That's what I think is going to happen. I also wanted to mention something that Simo brought up on Twitter, but apparently international buyers cannot buy this card at the moment without a US address. So if you are one of those international buyers, you're watching this video and you're like, I want to buy this. I'm able to bid, but I can't buy it. Simo was looking into that for you. He did not realize that if it was in the eBay vault, international buyers would be unable to buy it. Obviously, that's a huge snag for the auction. So he's going to be looking into something for you guys like that. So don't be deterred from bidding. I'm sure something will be figured out by then so that you guys can at least buy the card if you want to. Future Rux in here. Uh, I have a little update about the international buyer thing. So apparently you cannot bid at all if you're an international buyer due to it being in the eBay vault. So what I'm recommending is look into forwarding addresses. So if you're from somewhere else, look into a US forwarding address. They should be pretty easy. I've never actually used one myself, but I talked to Sassiato and he was like, yeah, I got one one time. They were pretty chill. It, it took me like less than a day to actually figure it out. So once you buy the card, like in theory, if you win it, you should be able to have it shipped to US and then shipped to you, which also is a good thing if you're an international buyer at all to have, because then you could save probably on shipping and stuff like that. So if you are an international buyer, make sure to check that out uh, so you can actually potentially win the card. I think that's our update for Tyler. And with my prediction of it probably not happening to the last day, I probably won't be making another video about this until we go live on the last day, April 29th. It's going to be pretty intense seeing how that thing ends. So make sure you come to the live stream. I'm excited for that. But now we have the 25th Mega 10. So last night, right before this went live, Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG tweeted new 2023 tens are coming this fall with three Mega 10s twice as many prismatic secret rares that's not what we care about we care about those 25th anniversary rares each tin will also contain one guaranteed quarter century secret rare from the list below featuring the monster's original version artwork so here we have the list this is all the 25th anniversary quarter century secret rares there are way too many words in this name so if you look here this is 16 different cards you can get so a nice variety first of all dark magician Okay, interesting question here. Featuring the monster's original version artwork. What does that mean for Dark Magician? So I know a ton of you right now are thinking a specific version and you're sure that that's the original. So Dark Magician had like four versions. We had DDS, we had SDY, both the same artwork. Then we had LOB, different artwork. Then we had the uh, PCY, I think, with the different artwork. It's the artwork you guys don't like, but it's Prismatic Secret, DB1, all that different stuff. I'm guessing that they're talking about SDY because there's two versions of that. They could be talking about LOB though. Now we do have a hint here. So we have 25th anniversary 10 dueling heroes. They have the picture here, which supposedly is what the 10 is going to look like. Not going to lie. looks a little cheesy, but here it says Dark Magician. That's SD, SDY artwork, also DDS artwork. But there's a little problem with that that we'll, you know, go into later. Then we have Exodia the Feminine one. Oh, Exodia that they just printed in Starlight Rare. Don't love that. We did see in my video the other day that they are not the exact same rarity. They are a little different. I personally think Starlights look a little better, not a ton better, but a little better. But I still don't love that they've instantly reprinted this card like less than a year later. Yeah. Then Red Eyes Black Dragon. This is the one where I have a problem with the tint. So original Red Eyes artwork. What does that mean? For Red Eyes, it's easy. SEJ, LOB, same artwork, right? But on here... We have a different artwork that they've already made a quarter century secret rare. So which is it? It says original artwork on the tweet, original version artwork. But then when you look over here on the pictures of what the tin is going to contain, it has the one that we've already had in the legendary collection 25th anniversary. So I think it's pretty obvious that they're not going to do the same card again. But at the same time, it's Konami. We never know. If they did do that, that might be one of the biggest blunders they've ever done. And that would be hard to beat because they've had some pretty big ones. But I'm going to have some faith. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do the same card twice. That would be ridiculous. Then we have a Rainbow Dragon. That'll be pretty cool. There's no Starlight of this, so that'd be pretty cool. Cyber Dragon has a Ghost Rare recently, but I think this will look better than the Ghost Rare because it's the current Ghost Rare, which are kind of iffy. Elements are your own Neos. I said on my tweet, they're finally giving Neos some love. Neos was only a secret rare as the highest rarity up until they gave it the secret Pharaoh's rare and Mama or Ma Mama, Mama. Why am I saying Mama? I don't know, Mama. But uh, Neos, uh, this is going to be the best version. This is going to be awesome. And then we get into the, the iffy ones. Stardust Dragon. I don't love to see this. You guys already know. I don't love that they're kind of reprinting the Starlights. I think that they, I mean, there's only so many cards that have been in Starlight, just pick some other ones. But I get why they did this, because they want to have all the most famous monsters from history, which we'll check later and see if they're all famous. But I don't like this, because we already have the Starlight Rare from Dawn of Majesty, and now this is sort of a reprint of that, 
And what this is doing, it's cannibalizing the old sets, which we're already doing with reprints for Mega Tens by reprinting all the good cards out of Dawn of Majesty. So the set is really bad right now, except you can get Starlight Stardust and other Starlights, right? That's pretty cool. But now you could just buy the tin and get the, the cheap version. You don't need that. So now that's going to kill that set even more. Same thing with Black Rose Dragon right here. Leof, already a terrible set to open, but you could pull the Black Rose Dragon. Now it's got a reprint, basically. I mean, it's not the same card we looked at them. They're a little bit different, but they're basically the same. And here they said it's the original version artwork, which is a real bummer because they had a chance to avoid reprinting those cards by just making Black Rose and Stardust into the alternate artwork or a new alternate artwork, which would have been even cooler. All you had to do was commission somebody to make a Stardust or a Black Rose look amazing and then put it in this rarity and nobody would care. I know a lot of you guys don't care anyway. You, yeah, a lot of you guys said, I don't care that they reprinted them. I just want to think about cannibalizing those old sets because it sucks to go back to an old set. Be like, ooh, cool. A two or three year old set. Let me open it up and there's zero value inside. We're already used to that from 2016 to 2019 up before Rising Rampage and No Starlights. They had reprinted every card in those sets and they're basically unopenable. Most of them suck. The Starlights were going to help with that. But if we just start reprinting the Starlights in a quarter century secret rares, it's going to make it almost as bad. All right, I'm getting off that. I'm done. I, I still think it's going to be extremely cool to be able to get the Stardust and Black Rose, but I don't love what it's doing to the old sets, but we'll move on. Blackwing Armor Master, speaking of, just got printed in Battles of Legend Crystal Revenge like the Exodia. So, okay, why is that a Starlight in the first place? I don't know. We could have just had it as this. It probably would have been better. Utopia, this basically has every rarity besides Starlight, so that's cool. Galaxy has Photon. That's pretty cool to see. Has a Ghost Rare. Like to see that. Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. I hate Pendulums, but I count a card. Enlightenment Paladin. I don't know anything about this card. I assume it's from an anime. Same with Deco Talker. Firewall, I think, is anime. And Salaman Great Blaze Dragon. Not really too excited about any of those cards, but I'm sure some people who are fans of those anime will be. But overall, I think this is going to be really really fun having 16 different quarter century rares. I'm excited to open those up and try to pull all of them. They're going to look great because we looked at the last ones from Legendary Collection 25th. They looked amazing. I had no problem with how they looked and uh, this is going to be pretty nice. So the tins are going to be amazing. I have some slight complaints that I spent several minutes talking about in this video, but even those slight complaints are not deterring me from being hyped up about this product. This is going to be the best tins we've had since I've been doing it on YouTube. Uh, the 2019 ones were good, but I think this is way way better so if you enjoyed this kind of video and want to hear about more insane news coming out about Yu-Gi-Oh, which has been a lot recently make sure to subscribe shout out to tone Fo show daxter jt cho puffins of doom ernesto deanda dizzy hoppus choice 333 my cycle james jance tcg trusted cards america deutzer supreme sage 21 and then the tie show ian musa junior barding mimic gecko and thomas mcclain thank you guys for supporting the channel i'll see you guys in the next one peace